Good morning, everyone, and welcome, Asha Kung, Shri Kumar, Christopher, Abina, Rupa, Simrin. Thank you for joining class. The others will join us. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Can I ask uh, Rupa to lead us in prayer, please? Ma'am, I'm in a hospital now. Can you please okay. ask someone else? No worries. No worries. Okay. Uh, I hope everything is fine, Rupa. Yes, ma'am. I came for a bone density test. Oh, some problem with my bones. No problem oh. otherwise. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. Thank you. Okay, so can somebody uh, lead us in prayer and also pray for Rupa, please, that uh, you know that her bones will be strengthened. Uh, that you know the, her bones will just receive the life of God in her right now, even as we pray that things will be restored in her bones, that she'll be healthy and made whole in Jesus' name. Can somebody lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Okay, thank you, Asha. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Um, I lift up everything into your hand, God, especially right now for... Um, Beautiful Lord, that you heal her and strengthen her bones, God. By the strive, we declare complete restoration of her body. No sickness shall come into her. Lord, I pray that her bones will be strong in Jesus' name. We declare that your name is over her life and we proclaim that she is healed, restored, and we pray for a divine miracles to take place in her life, Lord. And I lift up today's class, God, as we are about to learn the book of Romans that we may understanding depths and also give us the wisdom and understanding to grasp what Pastor Sana is teaching and also Lord help um help Pastor Sana and Lord as she teaches Lord that she will find what she needs looking for God. Thank you Lord for everything in the name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much uh, Asha. Uh, today we'll continue with our study of uh, Romans chapter 15. Uh, we stopped at uh, verses um, uh, 25. Okay, so can somebody please read uh, Romans 15 uh, verses 25 uh, to the end of the chapter, please? Anyone? Um, verses 22 to verses 33. So can somebody read verses Romans chapter 15, verses 22 to verse 33. Yes, go ahead. For this reason, I also have been much hindered from coming to you, but now, no longer having a place in this part and having a great desire, there's many years to come to you. Whenever I journey to Spain, I shall come to you. For I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you. At first, I may enjoy your company for a while. But now I'm going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. It placed in them indeed, and they are their debtors. For the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Therefore, when I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I shall go by way of you to Spain. But I know that when I come to you, I shall find in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Christ. Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayer to God for me, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Asha. Well read, and I always appreciate your willingness to read and to pray and to be available to uh, to do that in class. Thank you so much. Um, so here Paul writes in uh, verses 22 to verse 33, he's basically talking about his uh, 
his plans. He's sharing some of his travel plans. And uh, so he's saying, you know, uh, he wants to come to uh, meet them. He has a desire, a long desire, a long waiting desire to, uh, to meet the believers at Rome. He says, for this reason, I also have been much hindered. Uh, and what is, uh, has hindered him from coming or, or traveling to Rome and ministering there? Because, uh, you know, it was Paul's great desire to do the, the the pioneering work where no one has gone, where no man has gone. And he says, because of that, you know, uh, because he had gone to places where the, the gospel has not been reached, where no man has gone, uh, that was a hindrance from him coming to Rome because in Rome, they, uh, the, the believers, churches were already established, the work was going on, he said so much. Um, so he wanted to go to territories, to places where, uh, uh, you know, the gospel is not being preached to pioneer uh, the work there. Uh, but he says, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is his desire, uh, his great desire to uh, see them. And uh, Paul is writing this letter of uh, to the church at Rome from uh, Corinth, uh, and this is towards his, uh, his third missionary journey. Uh, before he uh, he plan he plans to go to Spain, and on the way he plans to go to Rome. Uh, before that, uh, he is planning to go to Jerusalem, uh, where he's collected some money from the churches in Achaia and Macedonia, and he plans to take uh, that money which he's collected uh, to the churches at Jerusalem. Uh, the churches of Jerusalem were suffering because there was a famine going on there. So then, from Jerusalem, he plans uh, to go to Spain. And on his way to Spain, uh, he plans to stop by uh, at um, Rome, okay? And um, he has this assurance that when he comes to Rome, he says in verse 29, uh, he shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of uh, Christ. Now, from this verse, uh, you know, was coined the term the full gospel. Okay, from this verse, Romans chapter 15, verse 29, uh, you know, uh, where Paul writes, he says, he shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ, uh, was coined the term, or the, the term full gospel came about. And uh, there are churches who are called the full gospel churches. Uh, they are basically churches who, you know, share the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Uh, they share that the gospel of uh, Jesus Christ not only brings forgiveness of sins, uh, but also healing for the body's deliverance from demonic uh, uh, powers. So uh, from this verse, uh, you know, is basically coined the word uh, uh, full gospel, where we have the full gospel churches, uh, where they're sharing the fullness of the gospel, just not preaching about uh, uh, the forgiveness of sins, but also, uh, you know, the 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 whole message of salvation, so and so, uh, the comprehensive word that so and so is, which is uh, forgiveness of sins, uh, healing, uh, deliverance, uh, deliverance from demonic attacks, strongholds, preservation uh, from sin and from um, uh, from the attacks of the uh, evil one. Okay, and verse 30, he says, you strive together with me in prayers to God uh, for me. He says, he's telling the believers at Rome, uh, uh, you know, uh, that he wants them to strive along with him in prayer. Now he's writing the believers at Rome and Paul is here in Corinth, but yet he's saying, I want you to strive with me in prayer. Uh, though, uh, you know, we are in different places, you know, yet we can come alongside other people. Uh, we can lend them our spiritual strength as we pray with them uh, even though we are in different places we can come together in an agreement in prayer where we are striving together with them in uh, prayer so what uh, does uh, Paul want the church at Rome the believers at Rome to strive with him in prayer for it's basically that he will be delivered from uh, the from those in Judea who do not believe um, uh, and he says that my service for Jerusalem will be acceptable to the uh, saints. So basically, he wants the believers at Rome to strive together with him in prayer uh, for the Jews in Judea who are not uh, believers. Uh, they're very angry with Paul because he became a, a, a follower of Jesus Christ. He's preaching the gospel and they're planning to kill him. And also that uh, even as, uh, you know, he goes to Jerusalem, uh, the Jews are also not 
there are not going to spare him and uh, whatever he's going to uh, you know do there in terms of giving the donations that he's collected his service to the saints uh, or the believers at Jerusalem will also be uh, acceptable so we see that Paul eventually goes to Jerusalem and uh, in Jerusalem he's captured by the Jews for uh, and he's there for two years he's imprisoned in a Caesarea for two years and then he appeals to Caesar and uh, we see that he's taken uh, as a prisoner uh, with a lot of guards. He's taken as a prisoner to Rome because he appeals to Caesar. And then when he's brought to Rome, he's kept in uh, under house arrest. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's not how he wanted to basically go to Rome. That's not how he wanted to, uh, uh, you know, minister at Rome to the believers there, even as he was longing to go. But uh, we see that situations changed. Uh, he, he was in chains. But irrespective of whatever his situation was, he used that situation yet to uh, minister to the believers at Rome. So even though he was in a house arrest, you know, gave him the liberty for people to come and meet him. Uh, so he would meet with believers, preach to them, teach them, uh, and uh, minister to them. So, you know, just shows us uh, Paul's heart. Uh, you know, uh, he could have been disappointed, he could have been upset that uh, he's imprisoned, he knows that, uh, you know, this time he's not going to get out, uh, uh, there's death that is impending upon him, he's going to die soon, uh, but all that does not stop him from, uh, you know, laboring from the Lord, from doing what God wants him to do. So, you know, it's a good example for us to learn as well, uh, you know, to see from Paul's life. You know, sometimes when we go through situations in life and we're in ministry, we get very disappointed, you know, frustrated uh, when, you know, when things are not going right, when we are not encouraged, we are not supported, when we are not given uh, importance or uh, we're not given pre shown preference or, uh, you know, we are not applauded for what we do uh, or, you know, just people gossiping, talking, backbiting, uh, you know, and the work is becoming very hard, strenuous. There's no free time for us. Uh, it's just all the time, labor, labor, labor. And we come to a place where we just want to give up. You know, but we can learn from the life of Paul, amazing life, you know, a man who is so well educated, a Pharisee, the tribe of Benjamin, uh, you know, uh, a man of high standing, high ranking in society, uh, uh, you know, a rich man uh, doing his own business, uh, you know, having his own business, earning his own money. But we see him in spite of all the shipwrecks and the beatings and being thrown into prison and hardships that he faced, he still, he labors hard for the Lord. And he says, you know, he writes in one of his books, he says, you know, I labor more than, I've labored more than all the other apostles, you know. Um, uh, so he continues to labor in spite of knowing what is going to be the eventual end of his life, how he's going to die, um, being in, in imprisonment that does not deter him or stop him from uh, pursuing God's call, doing what God has called him to do, and also to uh, ministering to people. So even though he wanted to go to Rome and, uh, you know, meet the believers uh, there, uh, the situations are different, circumstances was different, but yet we see he was able to uh, minister to the believers, and that is so uh, amazing. Uh, that we can also learn from Paul's uh, life. So that is the end of uh, uh, chapter 15, and he ends it by saying, you know, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. So he basically wants to go there to be refreshed and also to refresh the believers there and uh, that is what he does, even though he's in chains and though the circumstances are different from what he envisioned, but still he does uh, what he's called for and what he has been longing to uh, do. Okay. Any questions regarding verse 15, uh, chapter 15? Is Mangi in class? He had asked a question on uh, Wednesday. Uh, is Mangi there? No. Okay. Uh, just uh, Mangi's not there, but just to answer Mangi's question. Um, uh, you know, uh, yes, Jerusalem, Paul going to Jerusalem is mentioned in uh, in the book of Acts, uh, you know, uh, in Acts tw chapter 21, uh, even though he, you know, uh, gets a vision of, uh, uh, 
God warns him what is going to happen in Jerusalem, but yet we see that, uh, uh, and the disciples, uh, you know, pleading with him not to go up to Jerusalem, but he still goes up to uh, Jerusalem. We also see, uh, uh, we read in Acts chapter 9, verse 28 to 30, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, he declares in uh, Galatia that the three years had elapsed after his conversion before he went to Jerusalem. So after three years of this conversion, we see that uh, he goes to Jerusalem. But um, uh, Ilikram is not uh, mentioned uh, in um, uh, in Acts, even though Paul mentions that in, in Romans chapter 15, verse 19, Paul claims that, you know, uh, uh, he did his ministry from Jerusalem and around to uh, Ilikram, where he's fully preached the gospel of Christ. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it's not mentioned in the book of Acts specifically uh, that uh, Paul visited uh, Ilikram. But, uh, you know, commentators say it may fit uh, in Acts chapter 20, verses uh, two to three, where uh, was this two and three, where Paul says he had gone over that region and stayed there uh, for three months. So Ilikrim is due west from Thessalonica, and uh, you know there was a famous Roman road that went between Thessalonica and the Roman province of Ilikrim, um, and uh, so you know uh, though it's not. Uh, explicitly mentioned that he went to Ilikram, but you know, uh, commentators say that uh, in Acts chapter 20, verses 2 uh, to 3, uh, you know, where he it's uh, he uh, it in, in that places where it's mentioned in those verses, you know, uh, this possibility that he had gone to Ilikram. Okay, so that is answering Mangi's question, he's not here, but. Anyone else has any questions? No questions to chapter 15? Okay, if there are no questions, then uh, we'll move on to uh, the last chapter in Romans, Romans chapter 16. Uh, so, you know, the Romans chapter 16, Paul is just basically uh, mentioning his uh, last words, his greetings. He's bringing this letter uh, to a closure, to close. And, um, uh, you know, uh, it's very touching of what impresses us about uh, Romans chapter 16 is how Paul recognizes the people who minister along with him or are ministering in various areas and uh, he, how he's thanking other people who are serving along with him or serving the Lord in other places. And it also just uh, shows us or teaches us that, uh, you know, we also need to recognize and thank people who are ministering along with us, uh, you know, ministering different places uh, who have invested in us uh, and, uh, you know, and help us grow and mature or who are also mentoring us in our walk with um, uh, God, okay? So in verses 1, chapter 16, verses 1, right up to verse 16, he mentions a lot of names. So would anyone like to read that quickly? Romans chapter 16, verses uh, 1 to verse 16, please. Yes. I commend you, Phoebe, our sister, who was a servant of the church in Centria, that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and assist her in whatever business she has need for you, of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. <clears throat> Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved Affinitus, who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Read Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Read Urbanus, 
our fellow worker in Christ, and Statius, my beloved. Greet Apelius, approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my countrymen. Greet those who are of the household of Narcissus, who are, who are in the Lord. <clears throat> Greet Trifinia and Trifosa, who have labored in the Lord. <clears throat> Greet the beloved Persis, who labored much in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Greet Asyncritus, Felgon, Hermus, Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. Greet Philogus, Philogus and Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. Thank you so much, Christopher. Good job at reading all those names. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so here we see, you know, Paul's heart for uh, people. You know, uh, uh, and we also read in uh, in various places. You know, Paul is saying, uh, you know, my what is my joy, my crown, uh, when I stand before uh, the Lord? Is it not before? Is it not you? You know, people who are labored, who are ministered to. So he's saying, what is my reward? And when I stand before God, what do I boast about? It's not about all the missionary journeys. It's not the, uh, you know, great apostle he was, the epistles he, he wrote, the revelations he received, uh, you know, the, the amount of uh, uh, knowledge of the Old Testament. But he says, you, my people. And, he, you know, he says, uh, I have you in my uh, heart. You know, uh, he holds people so dear uh, uh, in his heart. Um, and because he's he has people in his heart, uh, you know the Holy Spirit. God had given him the liberty to to speak into people's lives, to write into people's lives, or to write upon their hearts. And so, it's so important for us, you know, uh, uh, ministry is not about just about writing books or you know, writing songs or having a big church or you know conventions, uh, meetings, uh, uh, crusades. But you know. Uh, Christian ministry is all about ministering to people. Uh, it's about people. It's about ministering to people. And uh, we, know we need to hold people in our hearts. And so here we see, you know, uh, Paul himself uh, uh, having people in his heart. And, you know, it's it's not easy for him to write all of these names. He could have just avoided it because we know in those days they didn't have just a paper and an ink or they didn't have a tab or, you know, a, 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 a laptop where they can just type out all of these things and, you know, just email it. Uh, just send it and just goes as an email they they write it on parchments it is so difficult they have to take that uh, so called pen dip it in ink several times and write it and it's not an easy process but you know just taking that pain the struggle uh, uh, to even uh, write out all of these names just shows uh, paul's heart for uh, people and we see that he calls them here as uh, fellow workers fellow laborers uh, in other places he call, he calls them yoke fellow you know um, fellow prisoners uh, you know uh, 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 you know, laborers in the Lord, he calls them all of these things just to show that, you know, uh, Paul is just actually uh, being mindful of who's serving and also telling people that it's ministry is not about all about I, me, myself. You know, uh, it's not that I'm doing everything. I couldn't have done everything on my own, but it's it's all of these uh, people. And he mentions a name here, Phoebe, uh, says Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant. Basically, the word servant uh, it translated is a deacon, uh, an elder in the church. Um, and she's overseeing the church in uh, Sincaria. And uh, uh, so, you know, uh, probably she's traveling towards Rome. So uh, Paul is saying when she comes, please receive her, you know, and give her uh, whatever help that is uh, needed, assist her in whatever way that she needs uh, help. And he also mentions about Aquila and Priscilla, the couple who, uh, you know, uh, had to leave Rome because uh, the, the Christians were persecuted and they were asked to leave Rome. Uh, so they they moved to Corinth where they met Paul. They worked alongside with Paul, ministered along with him. Uh, Paul, you know, um, 
spoke into their lives, uh, uh, trained them up. And then, you know, when uh, the door was open to go back to Rome, this couple goes go back and they continue the work there. And that is how Paul hears all about the work that is done in the at Rome, the ministry at Rome, the people uh, at Rome. And so he says, uh, he just remembers them. And he also remembers the sacrifice, how they uh, sacrifice or they risk their lives uh, for Paul's sake. Now, there's nowhere uh, mentioned uh, what was the risk that they took uh, uh, upon themselves to say, save Paul, but uh, we just read about it here, but we don't have any specific details uh, how they risk their lives. Uh, to save Paul's uh, life. Okay, Paul also mentions uh, many other names. Uh, basically, just uh, you know, acknowledging uh, what these people are doing for the Lord. Uh, hence, it also teaches us. You know, it's a good thing to acknowledge and thank people for the work that they are doing, the sacrifices they make for the uh, Lord. Okay, in verse seven. Um, you know, he mentions uh, a, a female's name, a lady's name, Junia. And uh, he says, you know, he mentions uh, this in verse 7, uh, uh, Andronicus and Junia, his fellow countrymen, fellow prisoners. And he says, who are of note among the apostles. So basically, uh, somebody who's uh, done something remarkable or outstanding among the other apostles. And uh, hence, it could imply that uh, Junia was a female apostle. Uh, we're not very sure, but we're just uh, you know, implying that she was a female apostle. Uh, this could be a possibility. But uh, you know, we also see that uh, Paul, uh, you know, uh, 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 making note of ladies, which is uh, very unknown and unpopular in those days, but people, uh, ladies who have done remarkable work, were serving the Lord in smaller, big ways. He just uh, credits them for what they are uh, doing. He also mentions about uh, churches who meet in various uh, houses. So it just gives us uh, a view about. Uh, uh, you know, where the churches met uh, during uh, that time, during Paul's time. Uh, it's not like the churches met in buildings like we meet today. Um, but, you know, in uh, the earlier days, during the time of Paul, they met mostly in houses. There were many house churches uh, because they didn't have church buildings. Uh, so they uh, they meet in different uh, Homes. Just look at how, you know, even Paul uh, greets the households of various uh, people uh, and not just, um, you know, his fellow workers, but also he's greeting uh, various households. So basically is a man who, uh, uh, you know, he maintains relationships, he knows the importance of uh, maintaining relationships in the body of Christ, the importance of co-working with other people. You know, uh, Paul has got things so right in his ministry, you know, ministry is not about building my empire, my kingdom, what my vision, my field, what God has entrusted to me, uh, but it is actually, um, uh, you know, build, uh, it's, it's, it's going about building uh, the vision, the plan and purpose God has entrusted, but also co-working alongside with other people in the kingdom of God and having, working with this kingdom mindset that, you know, uh, we are not just building our own kingdom, our own, uh, you know, vision that God has given to us, but we are actually building up the kingdom of God. So how we can partner alongside with other people who are having the same vision, what we can learn from them, you know, or the experience they had, uh, the things that they're doing, how they can uh, help us, how we can help them. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, kingdom building is all about co-partnering, co-working with uh, others, like-minded people. Uh, it's also not about just uh, my ministry, my church, my organization, not all about I, me, myself, but how I can invest and uh, along with others in building and edifying the body of Christ and building the house of God. Uh, and also, uh, uh, you know, when we're talking about uh, being kingdom minded, uh, it's about co-laboring. And, you know, when we co-labor, uh, Paul is mindful that, you know, uh, when, as he goes about doing his fulfilling his calling that God has given to him, that God is bringing about different people into his vision, into his field and how he treats them. You know, he does not treat them, he does not boss over them, he does not treat them uh, uh, or being authoritative, but he actually is training them up. 
We're training them up and sending them to different places, like he trains Timothy, Titus, uh, Aquila, Priscilla, and then he doesn't just keep them with him, but he, you know, he launches them out into different places, put them in pl places where they can uh, be responsible. And we see that, you know, uh, Paul has given them uh, good training, you know, through not only just teaching them, but through his very life, his very, uh, his, his, uh, his very life, his, his uh, ministry. And that is why he's, you know, able to say, uh, imitate me as I uh, imitate um, uh, uh, Christ. Okay, let me just give you that uh, uh, reference, you know, where he's, he's, uh, is able to tell people, you know, not just build up people in the faith, but you know, train them as uh, uh, leaders, uh, but also, you know, uh, uh, he says, you know, imitate me as I imitate uh, Christ. Where is that? I'm not able to find it. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, we just look at uh, if you look at First Corinthians chapter four, verse seventeen. Uh, you know, he says, uh, he's talking about Timothy. He says, for this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. So you know, it's basically uh, Timothy came to him as a son uh, who is new in the faith. But we see how uh, he, you know, he builds him up. Uh, 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 in the works of the Lord, and then he, you know, gives him uh, the leadership responsibility to build up the uh, the work that is uh, uh, in um, Ephesus. And uh, First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one, Paul says, "Imitate me as I also imitate uh, uh, Christ." And then uh, he goes on uh, to say in Philippians. Um, uh, chapter 3 verses 17 you know uh, brethren join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern the things which you learned and received and heard and saw me these two and the god of peace will be with you that is in philippians chapter 4 verse 9 so you know uh, all of these people have not just uh, uh, received revelations or knowledge from god's word but they've also you know just seen the way uh, they've learned from Paul's very life, you know, what they heard from him, what they've seen him, how they lived, his example, how he walked. And he says, just do that as a pattern. Just follow me as a pattern, everything that I have uh, uh, done. And it's just so amazing, uh, you know, for Paul to say that because his life was so transparent, so open. Um, and people could just see through, read through his life. And he's saying, no, just uh, be, uh, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. Just follow my uh, pattern. So that is how we need to be as kingdom builders, even as uh, some of us are at leadership responsibilities, uh, you know, come to a place where uh, our conducts, our lifestyle uh, is, uh, you know, uh, is in alignment with God's uh, uh, you know, godly standards, it's holiness that uh, people can just look at us and just imitate the way we do things, the way we uh, live our um, lives. Okay. Uh, any questions before we move on to um, verse 17 on? Any questions? Yes, Christopher, you pronounce them right. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay, um, so about the holy kiss, uh, this is in, in verse uh, yeah, in verse 16, greet one another with a holy kiss. Um, yes, you know, in, in, in those uh, days, uh, they did practice, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, kissing each other uh, in, in the, uh, in, as believers in the church of, uh, in the church. Uh, how can it be practiced today? Because we are to pattern Paul's uh, teaching. Um, uh, you know, nowadays we give uh, not a holy kiss, but you know, uh, it's just a handshake or a high five or a, a, you know, a hug. Uh, because I think uh, uh, you know, kissing is just in in our Indian culture. Uh, uh we don't do that but maybe in the western culture they uh 
they have no uh, qualms in, in in doing that. So I think it just uh, uh, differs on uh, the culture, you know, uh, whatever culture that uh, we come from, whatever is adaptable in our culture, uh, we can do that. I don't know what is the culture, uh, what is your culture, but uh, in our culture, we don't do much of, uh, you know, even uh, we just do handshake, high five. Few people just uh, give uh, hugs, but, uh, uh, you know, it's just limited to handshake. And, uh, you know, just to avoid um, uh, problems, uh, you know, men just give hugs to men, uh, women to women. But nowadays, our culture is changing in uh, Bangalore City. It's... Uh, uh, we see not only in the church setup but also in the in the public places when I see many uh, young people you know uh, in colleges when they just want to uh, say bye to their friends I've seen you know young boys and guys just hug each other and say bye so there is no handshake anything anymore uh, they just give a hug uh, but I, uh, there's no kissing because that's not very relevant in our own culture but uh, it depends uh, from culture to culture what people are, uh, you know, uh, comfortable doing. So, yes, if that sounds strange, um, you know, uh, Luke actually in Luke chapter 7, verse 45, uh, uh, shows how common uh, greeting a kiss was. And uh, you know, Jesus basically rebukes a Pharisee because he did not give a kiss uh, uh, Jesus a kiss when he came into his house, um, uh, you know, but uh, uh, commentators basically say that this practice was abused later and, um, uh, you know, the Clement of Alexandria complained about churches where people made uh, the church uh, resound with uh, kissing and says that it's shameless uh, use of a kiss uh, on occasions uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, where there's foul suspicions and evil reports have been, uh, you know, have uh, just been reported about Christians. And I think later on this uh, uh, practice they felt was being abused of kissing each other and uh, hence it was stopped in the churches. Yes. But it was a practice. Did that help, Kennedy? So that's why I think Paul says holy kiss. <laughs> He's qualifying the kiss as well as holy kiss. Uh, yes, Charles, I know in your culture you hug a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in our Indian culture, in some churches, uh, they do this, you know, uh, uh, or some people just uh, do this. But in our more modern context in Bangalore, a handshake, a hug, and high fi and just hitting your shoulder like this and things like that. <laughs> That's what we do. It's becoming uh, different, yeah, different things that people feel comfortable doing. But older folks like uh, me are just comfortable in saying hi and uh, you know just handshake or just hugging ladies, ladies, men with men. So that's in our context okay any other questions if there are no questions can we move on uh, can somebody please read uh, verses 17 to uh, verse 27 please anyone can read yes now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that as such serve not, not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men, I am glad therefore on behalf I'm I'm glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet 
shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. 21. Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and so see Peter, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tatius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, my host, and of the whole church, salute you. Ar Arrestus, the chamberlain of the city, salute you. And Quartus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to step to establish, to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest and by scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Thank you, Harrison. Um, just give me a minute, please. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you, Harrison. So in verse 17, we see Paul's uh, heart once again, uh, his desires for believers to live in unity. Uh, he says, uh, you know, he says, watch out for people who are causing divisions and offenses, uh, which are contrary to what he has uh, taught them or has been teaching them through this letter. He says that people are speaking things that are different and causing uh, people to stumble. Uh, you know, he says, avoid such people. Now, why is he saying this? Because this has uh, been an ongoing problem in various churches. And that is why we see in, in, in most of his letters, he's writing to the church of Galatia, Galatians, uh, he's writing to the church at, uh, you know, he's writing to Timothy in First and Second Timothy. He's writing to uh, Titus, and uh, you know, um, uh, uh, in in Galatians chapter uh, four, verses eleven and twelve, he says, you know, I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain, brethren. I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all so what paul is basically saying here is you know he's uh, is very disappointed at hearing what is happening at the church at galatia because he has labored so much for them in their faith he's brought them up in their faith he's taught them things but they're being easily swayed away by some other people uh, who insist on some of the old testament practices of the law um, uh, that still has to be observed and uh, it seems that paul uh, what he has labored among them has gone in way uh, uh, you know, but we see that uh, we see Paul's heart for the people. He says, in spite of all this, even though he's heartbroken, he's disappointed. He says, "You have not injured me at all." So we basically see his love for people, uh, but also we, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's he knows that there are, uh, you know, these Jewish believers who are coming to the church. It's not only the problem in the church at Galatia. There's also problem the church is at Ephesus and that is why he leaves Timothy there and he's writing to Timothy uh, he's telling him what kind of leaders to choose in uh, first Timothy chapter 3 uh, you know he's telling them uh, the different kind of leaders that he needs to choose uh, and reminding them what kind of men they have to be uh, telling Titus also the kind of leaders he has to choose uh, uh, because there was this problem of these Jewish believers who were coming into the church they were bringing about their uh, Jewish mythologies Jewish fables uh, you know the uh, 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 kind of eating the food they have to eat following old testament rituals and practices and circumcision and keeping the laws and everything which is kind of burdening the people and that was not needed for people uh, in the new covenant and paul has already taught about uh, taught this to them uh, but you know people are going away and uh, these Jewish believers are bringing all of this teaching and he says, you know, uh, have nothing to do with such people, uh, you know, causing division, causing offenses, keep away from some such people, avoid people who are dis divisive and offensive. 
uh, Paul says, keep away with, keep away from them. Don't partner with them, because these people are serving their own selfish interests. They have nothing to do with, uh, you know, people going the faith, or they have. They is nothing to do with uh, uh, Christian maturity. Their walk with God, uh, you know. Uh, uh, building righteousness or maintaining their righteousness by faith. It's not by keeping the law. And so Paul is saying, you know, I've taught you about all of these things from, you know, written about all of this for us is from chapter one, right up to chapter 15. Uh, so it's taught you all this, you know, now since you know about all of this, don't partner with them because these people are actually serving their own selfish interests. And that is what he's even uh, when he's writing to uh, uh, Timothy, first Timothy, second Timothy mentions this, you know, uh, uh, when he's writing to Titus as well, he's he's saying the same thing. And here he's saying, you know, uh, you know, because they want they're feeding their own bellies. That means they're they're being very selfish. They're doing things to gain prominence in the church for people to listen to them, to them being leaders, and also uh, uh, through these means, he's trying to just you know uh, make use of them and uh, you know uh, take money from them. So he's saying they're not serving Jesus. They're the serving people who are simple. Uh, and, you know, uh, people who are simple believe anything and everything. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, don't uh, give room for these uh, offensive, decisive people because they take advantage of the simple people. Uh, avoid such people. And it's important for believers to stay together. And he says, be wise in what is good. Uh, know what to avoid and know what to pursue. Then verse 17, he says, don't get involved with evil. Stay away from evil people. Stay away with what they have to say. Don't even listen to them. Don't even encourage them. Uh, don't give a year to them. And as you do this, uh, he says in verse 20, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Uh, and so he's saying, you know, uh, you as believers, you know, when you do this, when you walk in unity, in peace and oneness, and when you walk in um, what God has called you to do, you build up your faith in um, uh, in godly ways and what is required of you, he says, you know, you will walk in dominion, you will live experientially, uh, you know, you will walk in dominion and experientially you will walk in triumph over Satan. You'll have, uh, uh, you know, you will triumph over Satan in everything that will be your experience and God will cause you to walk in triumph over whatever Satan is uh, doing. And then he continues to greet uh, a lot of other people. And then he uh, ends this whole, uh, you know, letter by, uh, you know, just blessing them. He says, now to him who is able, uh, which means, you know, with all the dangers that uh, the believers at Rome are facing uh, and every church that is facing, you know, persecution, uh, Paul fittingly concludes by commending them to him who is able to establish them, to keep them safe. And uh, Paul also knows that this will be done according to my gospel. He says, you know, uh, you know, according to his gospel, that means the gospel of Jesus Christ that he is uh, being pre his preaching. Remember, he's, he spoke about uh, his gospel uh, elsewhere in this uh, uh, in this letter and here again he uh, mentions uh, uh, my gospel uh, where does he say that uh, yeah. in verse 25 he says now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel the preaching of Jesus Christ my gospel is basically the gospel of Jesus Christ that the whole gospel of Jesus Christ that Paul is teaching so uh, the gospel that he was preaching, the gospel, uh, he says, is a gospel that was kept secret, you know, but is now unveiled. And this is the gospel that he is uh, preaching. So in verse 26, Paul says this gospel is being made manifest by prophetic scripture and is made known to all nations, which means this gospel was in the prophetic scripture in the Old Testament. It was hidden there, which means people did not know uh, about it unless until it was unveiled until it was revealed by god sending his own son jesus coming and dying on the cross and it was uh, you know it was brought out open uh, it was unveiled to us and um, you know he says we are now proclaiming the same gospel uh, to all people in 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 every nation and he says according to the revelation of the mystery and 
Paul means that this, uh, this as the whole plan of redemption that was brought about by Jesus Christ, uh, which God announced, uh, you know, this plan previously through the prophets, uh, from the very beginning, from Genesis, right, all through the Old Testament, but its final outworking uh, wasn't evident, wasn't seen until it was revealed to the person and the work of uh, Jesus Christ. And then he ends this uh, letter by, uh, you know, giving them the benediction to God alone, wise be glory to Jesus Christ for ever. So in this conclusion, Paul reflects on the wisdom of God's plan in the gospel uh, and the fact that such wisdom is beyond man's understanding. Uh, you know, God had a plan that no man would come up with, uh, but, uh, you know, the wisdom and the glory of the plan of God is now evident. And he's even spoken about it in the chapters, uh, you know, when he's talked about Abraham, David, and how he brought it, uh, you know, uh, the plan was revealed to the Jews and to the Jews, it was passed on to the Gentiles. So if there's anything in the book of Romans that, ex, uh, you know, explains from beginning, uh, if there is anything that the book of Romans explains from the beginning to end, it's the greatness and the glory of the plan of God uh, that Paul preaches the gospel as the good news. And, uh, and hence, he's, Paul sees this as very fitting to conclude this letter, you know, praising God for his plan, his plan of salvation, of how he includes uh, all people from all nations and all tribes uh, into the gospel, into the salvation uh, plan that he had. Um, and Paul is saying that, you know, I'm preaching that uh, uh, gospel. So the good news that Paul preached uh, presented uh, the God who chose to glorify himself through the person and work of Jesus Christ and who will glorify himself uh, in the future uh, uh, forever and he just gives him all the glory and honor. So Paul is basically in this letter spoken about, you know, uh, how God unveiled his plan and purposes right from the beginning uh, through creation, uh, Adam, David, you know, to the prophets, uh, through the Jews, how he called them, uh, you know, and how he moved, uh, used the Jews to bring, bring about this plan of salvation or to reveal the gospel or to reveal the blessing uh, uh, that was for the Jews as well uh, to the promise that he gave uh, Abraham, even how it was a promise for the Gentiles and how they are also inclusive of this blessing and how he's revealed everything and how Paul is making that revelation known to people. And uh, he says uh, he gives glory and honor to God for his plan and, uh, uh, you know, how he made this plan evident and how he's unveiling this plan uh, so people can know and um, and he gives all the glory to God. Somebody had their hand up. Yes, Christopher. Yes, Pastor. I just wanted to if you could just give us an example of um, that um, news words. Shmeel said, uh, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. An example in uh, in sort of present life. So just give us an example. Thank you. So that is in verse uh, nineteen. In verse nineteen. Yeah, so for your obedience has become known to all, therefore I'm glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and uh, simple uh, concerning uh, evil. So basically wise in what is good is, uh, you know, all that he has thought about, uh, you know, he's taught them uh, regarding the law, regarding uh, the, the rituals that they want to keep, the righteousness is not by faith and not uh, uh, by keeping the laws. And then the observance of, you know, certain days that people have, the food habits, uh, 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 you know, the, the kind of, uh, you know, the dressing sense, uh, you know, uh, the way you treat people, uh, uh, you know, uh, treating everyone, keeping the, the bond of unity, of peace, uh, uh, as far as possible, keep that, you know, submitting to leadership, to government, to civil government. So all of these things that he has spoken to them, uh, you know, what is wise and what is good, he says, uh, you know, keep that. Uh, and uh, 
you know, don't be uh, act simple because if you, uh, uh, you know, pe people who are simple are people who are easily swayed away by anything and everything they listen to. They just follow people. Okay, he says, don't be simple uh, in that sense. You know, be wise. Uh, you know, I've uh, I have mentioned all of these things. You have taught you all of these things. Now act wise. Don't just believe anything and everything that people say. You know, you can receive only righteousness by faith. You can be justified only by keeping the law, by circumcision, uh, by observing eating this kind of uh, meat, uh, eating this kind of food, uh, practicing these certain days and all of that. This all Old Testament rituals. You know, he's saying be wise. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, and just don't, uh, you know, act simple and just follow what anything and, and everything that uh, people are uh, saying. So in today's world, uh, you know, how do we need to be wise in what is um, good? There are a lot of um, uh, teachings. There are people who are saying, you know, uh, revealing different manifestations of the way the Holy Spirit works, uh, you know, doctrines that have come up. Uh, uh, and we need to always go back to the scripture because uh, you know whatever God does does not violate his word and what he has revealed to us in scripture the, and always uh, will be in accordance with nature with his nature and what he has revealed in the written word and hence uh, you know we need to be wise in um, the doctrines the different teachings the manifestations uh, of the spirit but people are saying this is the work of god it could be even uh, fleshly manifestations but uh, how do we know the difference between the spirit led manifestations the fleshly manifestations is by the fruit so we just wait uh, and watch and see uh, and if it's of god it will it will last if it's it will bear fruit you know, we will see the evident fruit. There will be fruit. Uh, there will be transformation of people's lives. Um, uh, you know, uh, the move of God, healings, deliverance that is happening. But if it's a manifestation of the flesh, it'll just be shown by the fruit. So uh, just be wise in what is good, what God has called us to do. Uh, not just keeping rituals for the sake of rich, keeping it uh, for the sake of rituals, which has no meaning. Uh, but doing things that uh, bring uh, glory and honor to God. So Colossians chapter 3 says, uh, you know, Paul is saying, in everything that you do, whether in, in word or do it, indeed, do it all for the glory of uh, God. Okay, so I'll compare this to verse 19, uh, to Matthew chapter 6, 10, verse 16. So what does Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 say? Sorry, we just overshot our time, but we'll just stop with, uh, this Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 behold I send you as sheep in the midst of wolves therefore be wise as sermons and harpless yes yes basically that yeah uh, so I hope I answered your question I think it was Harrison who asked right or oh, Christopher sorry Christopher I hope I answered your question Harrison has also helped us with Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 okay uh, anyone else has any questions Okay, if there are no questions, then uh, this is our last class. Uh, I hope Romans uh, helped you, uh, uh, you know, in just uh, knowing in depth the doctrines um, from the Old Testament as well, how we can apply it in our everyday lives. Uh, please feel free to share your feedback. Uh, whatever it is, whether it's in the form of a suggestion, criticism, you know, whatever it is, I'm willing uh, uh, to take your feedback because it just helps me. Uh, next time when I have to teach Romans, I can keep this in mind because we don't know. We just teach. Uh, we think that it's just be, it's uh, it's useful, applicable for students, but you are the one on the receiving end, so you know better. So please share your useful uh, feedback, even if it's criticism. Don't uh, hesitate to. Uh, share it because it just basically helps me helps me grow to become a, a better teacher and how I can communicate the word of God better so uh, any thoughts on the teaching style the delivery style the the content um, the way of doing it if I was very fast anything you can just uh, share your feedback please take a moment or two to share your feedback it will just be very helpful assessments also you can share your feedback it will just help okay uh, I can just wait. Anyone wants to still share your feedback on this uh, chat section, you can do so. Those who want to leave class, you can leave. Uh, if there are any questions you can have, you can post it on the stream page. If there's any um, 
section or portion of scripture you didn't understand you want me to teach again please feel free to post that on the stream page and we can uh, meet together again as a class and i can teach that as well okay if not we this will be our last class and uh, i've also posted the days when uh, we have the the assessments so i will do that on those days okay okay thank you everyone uh, god bless you all and uh, Go back to your notes, listen to the lectures. Uh, the best way you can practice it is uh, to, to teach the Book of Romans and you get more acquainted when you teach. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher, Kung, Abinas, Harrison. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Kung. Thank you, Asha. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Simran. You are able to uh, do your assessment with that link I sent yes, you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Did you post the assessment? Answer? Yes, yes. Okay. Last okay. night I posted. Okay, great. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Sidan. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rose. God bless you too. Thank you, Simran.